ho, it's ho, Christmas! Ho, ho, oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> oh, God, that uh, hurt. How are you? You, uh, you looking forward to lockdown four? <sighs> Is it four? I don't even know where we're at yeah. now. Must, must, well, I think the four? last one didn't really count. Let's say four. Well, yeah. by the time this did... podcast goes out, they might have cancelled Christmas. <gasps> I might be locked down five. Yeah. Oh, dear. Are, you, uh, are either of you at all in the festive spirit? Because I'm definitely not. <laughs> no, I'm really not feeling it this year at all. Aren't no. you? No. I'm all right with sad, it. I'm, I'm, like, Christmas. I'm not as Christmassy as I have been in the past in, in other years. I mean, certainly not last year. That was a very bad one. But uh, I'm mm. somewhere in the middle. I'm okay. I'm feeling some Christmas. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Mm. That's good. I'm oh. going to see family soon and that might change things. Yeah, perhaps. hopefully. Yeah, being served on hand and foot, being fed little bites to eat. That's <laughs> yeah. that's the dream. That's the Christmas I know and love. Mm. Oh, all for the small price of... Ben, can you come and help empty the dishwasher? <laughs> oh, forget it. I'm leaving. Michael, this can you is, send how the dare printer? You? This is the worst thing you can say to me. <laughs> this is me time. <laughs> I don't want to empty the dishwasher. I'm not 12 anymore. We haven't put up our, like any decorations yet either. We've just not had the time. So we've got a barren house. I think that's, that's the main factor in this lack of Christmas cheer for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We've had our tree up since like the 30th of November. So... Oh, nice. I'm normally not a pre-December tree kind of guy, but uh, my grandparents were coming over on like the first weekend of December and we thought it'd be nice to have it up for them. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we wouldn't have had a chance to buy it any other day other than the 30th of November. So that's when we got it and we put it up. You got a real tree? Yeah, real tree. Whoa! Um, it smelled fancy. nice for like two days and now I'm just nose blind to it, which doesn't <laughs> normally happen. I find that I can normally smell, I can smell it, but <laughs> this year I just can't. I don't know if it's because... Uh, I mean, we're in a different house now and maybe there's something about the fact that we're just constantly in the living room. Whenever we're awake in this house, we're just in the same room with the tree. So we're probably just overexposed <laughs> to it. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Have fun removing it from the house when it leaves behind this lovely little trail of needles Well, and bits. Michael Johnson, the, oh. uh, the, gr- the uh, not the greenhouse, the garden centre <laughs> we bought it from gave us a flyer and they said, uh, we'll come around and, and remove your tree when you're done. We'll recycle it for free. Oh. Which is Magic. crazy. I don't know what the catch is. Um, there's got to be some kind of trick, <laughs> but yeah, that's what they said. Interesting. Christmas miracle. Well, changes everything. Have you ever burned a Christmas tree? <laughs> yeah, a really dry one once. I burned it's one in like February. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, what? I've, ne- I've never had a, a real Christmas tree at any point in my life, so I, I didn't realize burning was part of it or something people did. It's, it shouldn't be. It's, it's not a tradition, clear. no. It's just... <laughs> It's my grandparents fun. used to quite often have fires. They had a little field at the back and they had quite a big garden. So there was constantly like various prunings and twigs and branches and stuff that needed burning. So they would have <laughs> fires quite quite often and they'd burn a Christmas tree. Um, man, it's smoky. Yeah, Boy. it goes up real quick. Yeah. Like scary, scary. And it's loud too. Mm, it is very loud. Ooh, it's like one of those poppy ones. Yeah, kind yeah. of. <laughs> like it all just goes up in one go. It's quite, quite a spectacle, though. Mm, yeah, it's hella fun. Mm. You know dangerous. what I'm doing next Christmas then? <laughs> no, Michael. We'll never <laughs> see you again. Buying ten trees and burning them all. <laughs> Be sick. Yeah. Well, I think it's time, gentlemen. Ooh. Top into the Christmas podcast. Play the Christmassy version of the intro theme. Oh no, we. Don't, I don't think we've got one of those. Do we not? We we have a jingle, a, a jingly version. Oh, do we? Oh, that's fine then. I think I think, think so. so. Oh. I'd be dobbing myself in it here when I've got to make that from scratch tonight. But yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not making one. <laughs> Same well, yeah, whatever, whatever I put in here, okay. We'll just roll the Halloween one again. Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> Screams and witch cackles. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official, um, official Idiots, Idiots. Ooh, podcast. podcast. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three hoes, where everybody <laughs> brings hoeing, hoeing to talk, long to hoe about. How about. How about. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Michael. 
Hello, everybody. Jump into Christmas. Da, 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 da. Is it jump into Christmas? Is step into thing? Christmas. It's, step it's a less into active Christmas. Step commitment. Kick into punch into <laughs> Christmas. Punch <laughs> into Christmas. I want just want the super aggressive version of that song. Smash into Christmas. Pile drive into Christmas. <laughs> Oh, oh, we do need more me. aggressive Christmas music. It's it's all like the, the actual season. It can be quite manic, and we need yeah. some, we need some modern music to reflect that. Not all this lovely lovey dubby. I don't even know what that was, but it's pleasant music. Have a fucking decent Christmas. Yeah. Have a really decent one. Ooh. Eat some fucking turkey. The intentions of the darkness is don't let the bell end. The bell end, uh, yeah. <laughs> can can be read as quite sort of threatening. If you go there, you know, don't don't let it end. No, don't. God, please. Don't let the bell end. You'll have me to answer to if that bell ends. <laughs> I will fucking kill you if you let my bell end. <laughs> be really cross. Ah, <laughs> oh, um, shit. Are we... Uh, collectively not collectively are we going back to various families family homes for christmas mikey are you staying put of course i'm going back up north for for about a week just before oh, christmas yeah. It'd be lovely, lovely. be around paco and get some northern delicacies back in me and a top up of the accent because i'm markedly <laughs> less northern than i was a year ago so he's yeah, you get my white eyes back in and my yeah. get used to <laughs> oh wait there's got to be something in there Mikey, oh. there's a, an amazing place in the Granger Market Ooh. that does vegan donuts. Ooh, Ooh. you piqued my interest. You never told me I about this. I had one. Man. Well, it was sort of a surprise. I have, I have a, another vegan friend. I'm sorry, Mikey. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a and uh, he was like, I've, I follow them on Instagram. They look amazing. And so we we went there, and I bought one. And I tell you what, yeah. sign of sign of quality for me at least didn't taste like a vegan donut it tasted like a normal donut oh my god it's magical <laughs> but it was uh fucking lovely so i'll have to remind me and i'll send you the i'll send you their information you gotta go check it out really, yes, really please good. it reminds me of well the donuts are now the second most exciting thing i've ever seen around granger market because i remember one christmas um i saw ross kemp walking around granger <laughs> Whoa. market <laughs> Wow. I think it was What's doing, he doing there? I can't remember what it was. I think it was like some TV show about the dangers of Christmas markets because after I think it was that string of them getting attacked. <laughs> it looked like it was about to get festive. So I got out of there. Paid six got quid for churros. Bacon, I got out of there. <laughs> Maybe he's just followed around with a camera and some armed guards, which is very festive. What? Cheers, That's Ross. So weird. That is really weird. If there was one city he was he's gotta be safe in, it's Newcastle. <laughs> Oh, nice to see you around. Good times, good times. Yeah. In other Peter, news, are you, are you heading to family? I am. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say this is completely unrelated, but my uh, my computer updated last night, and I've just realised it's changed the temperature into Fahrenheit on the mm. bottom on my taskbar. How, how my work PC did that? And why I was is that what the hell had happened? Gross! God's sake! Um, <sighs> Fucking anyway, Microsoft. Sorry, I just I had to. I just had to tell the whole world that. It, I'm baffled. What, what is that temperature? How I was can like, it it's not forty-two something. degrees outside. There's no way that's right. Um, I am going home to the family. Yeah, um, we are. Uh, Amy and I are being shared again this year between our two families. That's the problem when you you know you're so popular. Everyone loves mm. you and your family. You've not fallen out with any of them yet give, yes, give it time peace. it will happen <laughs> uh, but no we, we're seeing one set of parents on Christmas Eve day staying the night getting up on Christmas morning doing some presents there then going to the other set of parents which is only an hour away fortunately and the roads are absolutely dead on Christmas Day so it's oh, pretty, that doesn't sound too bad pretty quick journey yeah and then spend the rest of the Christmas Christmas Day there so um, lovely fantastic. yeah seeing plenty of family over the the festive period. Yeah. Well, yeah. we here at Podiots wish all of you at home a very safe and happy festive period, regardless of what you do or don't celebrate. I you hope do. you get to spend yeah. some time with family and uh, maybe enjoy a bank holiday if you're in the UK. And mm -hmm. if you're in retail, our oh, thoughts God. are with you. So sorry. Yes. Bless our you all. F's are in the chat you. for you. And you're seeing family too, aren't you, Ben? Yes. 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 That'll, that'll be lovely. I'll be able to see uh, my, my grandmas, Ooh. which will be mm -hmm. nice. And uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen some of these family members for, for a long old time. 
Yeah. So it'll be uh, it'll be nice, you know, before the novelty wears off after about three minutes. Yeah. And uh, you want Racist to go back Uncle to... Derek comes out and says, like, oh, this is why. <laughs> this is why I don't talk to him. <laughs> I don't know if I have any racist Uncle Derek's. I think I'm quite lucky. Oh, I think that's just my family then, isn't it? <laughs> I'm all right. I've just got, uh, and a lot of people have this, uh, Brexit grandma. Do you Ooh. have a Brexit grandma? I have a Brexit grandma. I don't think any of my, I don't think my grandparents voted Brexit, but I think they have some opinions shared with some Brexiteers <laughs> kind of thing. Right. I think oh, on balance they thought EU is better, but yeah, they've got, mm. they've got thoughts. I've got um, an anti-vaxxer <laughs> uncle. Whoa! Oh, Auntie that- Uncle Vaxxer. Yeah, uh, Auntie. <laughs> she is that, uh, yeah. Uh, I've got an Auntie Vaxxer. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's very good. Well, we're, we'll all enjoy navigating those choppy waters over the next couple of weeks. This is, of course, our final podcast of the year. We'll be back in early January at some point, maybe uh, first, probably second week of January, to be honest. Yeah, um, but uh, yes, we will. Proceed with the episode now. We've got lots of things and festive, presumably festive, questions from all of you. But first, we need to talk about streamlabs.com forward slash poddy at donations. If you go there and support us by donating £3 or more, you can get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. It really helps us. You've all been obscenely generous this year and uh, you've written some really lovely, lovely messages for us that we're going to read some out, out some. <sighs> we're going to read out some of them now. Michael. We begin with one vowel from she who is very generous. Thank you very much. And has left us a little message. Merry Christmas to you and the entire Walrus clan. Thank you for continuing to provide laughs during dark times and for doing this in addition to being excellent elsewhere. Have a great festive break. A kiss. Thank you very kiss. much, she Thank kiss. you. Kiss. Donak 07. NFT of the McNuggies cake. <laughs> Big fan of that. <laughs> no. oh, if, if NFTs weren't just so demonstrably bad, that would be a great idea. <laughs> Sadly yeah. not. Festive Fox 42. Warhammer, Age of Chegmar. <laughs> a no. Christmas Caroline, who was very generous, and they say, You there, what day is this? Scrooge shouted to the boy. The boy gave a puzzled look. It's Christmas morning, sir. Scrooge tossed a handful of 50p coins to the boy and said, (laughs) take these to Peter Austin. I really don't want to, sir, said the boy. (laughs) Beautiful tale. Thank you. Thank you. Heartwarming. (laughs) Coin warming as well. Mm, Very (laughs) bad. (laughs) Bartek and Xmas Caroline. Shit. Forgot to donate again. Fur. Rosie is Gilborn Supreme. Crafty Cider, Bristol LTE. Happy Grussy time. Ooh. No. <laughs> it's absolutely, absolutely not Grussy not. time, thank you. No. <laughs> Sam de Jingle Barber is very generous and they say, I fell asleep listening to party. It's part. I fell asleep party listening it's. to party. Party uh, hits. Pa- sorry. Party just, hits. I think it's meant to be party hits. Party hits. It's oh, like it was, that, might have been dictated it, to his yes. phone. It's not party hits, it's party hits. I fell it's. asleep. <laughs> hey, that's how Americans say it, right? <laughs> I fell asleep listening to party hits and it subsequently de- dreamed of dreamed that you locked. Oh my God. Hold on. <laughs> this is a difficult one. Michael, you he, can do this. This isn't Mikey's fault. This has been <laughs> spoke. He said, Alexa, please write this message to, to Streamlabs. Party hits. I think oh. locked is is you lot, not you locked. Yeah. That, I dreamed that you lot were putting on a play. I don't know what was going on, but you were all on stage and that D- Dave on Twitter was trying to sabotage all your lines. At the end, he got a standing ovation. Of course that guy did. <laughs> yeah. What a dick. Sadly, that didn't translate to a standing ovulation, but... No. <laughs> not have more. Oh. Thank you very much, Sam. Sorry for Thank you, Sam. The festive period. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear let's, let's run away from that as quick as we can <laughs> very good though merry chegmas to all jimmy the rustler who's very generous Thank arse you, face <laughs> old stooky claws pro trainer who's also generous and they say hey guys as this is the last episode of the year i just wanted to say i hope everyone in the pod squad has a good holiday period no matter what or how they celebrate can't wait to see what things get brought along to talk about in the new year keys keys thank you keys keys and finally delicious delicious festive chegnog 
is generous <laughs> and they say, been watching for years, but never been able to afford to donate until now. So here's some monies and a massive thank you for all the entertainment over the years and channels. Have a lovely Christmas and New Year and keep on being the best boys or girls. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, the Cheers. tiny troop this fortnight begins with Merry Chegmas, everyone. Merry. Sir Digby Benson Phillips, who was very Janerish, Jane, Jane and said, <laughs> just want to say a huge thank you to you boys for keeping Poddy It's Going. It's still my favourite podcast, and I promise a big donation when I start my new job oh. in a few months' time. Love oh. you. Uh, love your boy, Diggers. Thank you, Diggers. Well, you don't have to do that. And There's no expectation. Job. It's, all, it's all gratefully received. Thank you very much. Uh, Czechoslovakia, but festive. <laughs> Momo beans. Lord Weihnachtsman v- Weihnachtsmantovich. Oh, uh, you've included the message there, Ben, but that I wasn't have. very generous. Disgusting. We're not reading his message out. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Mikey needs Grussy. No. Uh, Stephen Skodes, who was very generous and said, hello, boys. Thank you all for a fun year. Every pod squad, I've not been in Ben's fast crew. Oh, Explain no. yourself, Ben. <laughs> JK, love you, really. You boys have done an amazing job on Podiots this year. And here's to many cool episodes in the new year. Love you, boys. Thank um, you, Stephen. If you want to get Stephen. in the fast crew, we do it in reverse chronological order. Mikey gets the most recent. Peter gets the second most recent. And I get the oldest. So if you put your donation in as soon as you see that we've started recording Poddy, it's by the stupid Dave Benson Phillips image. Yeah. That's probably how you get in. Yeah. Like the, Donate the as soon as you see star. it, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reindeer Drop Joy. Freddie Weber is Rudolph. A very meaningful Poddy, it's Pete Benson, Michael my, 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 <laughs> Uncle Tim with the long finger, uh, the very, very generous <laughs> rye bread boy who says, whether it was being drawn by Mikey, I was the sexy bee, or just making the commute bearable with Podiots, I cannot thank you enough for all the entertainment. I wish I could have donated more. Big love from Dan Ander. Thank you very much, rye bread thank boy. Thank you. Thank you endlessly. That was more than enough. Uh, caroling with Caroline. Harold Holt Aquatic Center. Let's Game of the Year 2020. Oh, sorry. Legs, legs. Game of the Year 2022. <laughs> Is that Legs? Is that Legs? Uh, <laughs> Caroline, it's finally over. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, the very generous Prince Beefcakes, who says, hard to believe it was three years ago that I was first hearing about chocolate grandma while <laughs> shoveling a foot of snow off the driveway of a house I'd been trapped in without power for three oh, days Jesus. with nothing but an air mattress and my cat. Oh, my hug, goodness. hug, kiss, kiss. Oh, Prince Beefcakes. What very a curse Christmas. Christmas. Hope you're doing all right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and finally, in my in my gang is fish come all ye faithful. <laughs> Lovely, thanks. Ah, uh, very good. And finally, in the fast crew, we've got the very generous Alan Claw, who said, "Merry Chrysler, my dudes. Thank you lots and lots for all the laughs this year." Keys, keys. We've keys. also got the very generous. You know, it's all about Dakum, who said, "Merry Crimbles, boys, girls, ferrets, and other. Hope everyone has a grand Christmas season, full of joy. Not getting stuck with the family for too long because Blair. Don't forget to spread those cheeks, slap those balls, and enjoy, and enjoy oh. all the Christmas ham." Oh, that sounds like <laughs> a weird invitation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, stupid, you. sexy flounders. The very generous pollen packed pipe who said yes it was intentional. How were that hot how were that hot dogs at the Christmas market? <laughs> uh, this is a callback to last episode where oh, pollen packed pipe gave an obscene um, amount of money, quite frankly. And oh, that's it, it was. Oh thank you very much, pollen packed pipe. That was obscene. Thank, thank you. you. I haven't gotten down to the Christmas market yet, but if I can find Ross Noble. Was it Ross Kemp or Ross Noble? Ross Kemp. Ross Kemp. Oh, shit. That, <laughs> you must have been really confused when I said, if there's one place that'd be safe, it's Newcastle. Because uh, yeah, Ross I just Noble's kind of went along with around, it. If he well, I just like thought Jesus you meant that, Christ. like... As a hard man. <laughs> I just thought you meant that the Geordies would respect a hard man. Oh, no. Not <laughs> yeah, that that's at what all. I, assumed. I just thought, because Ross Noble... I, I heard Ross, and I was like, what's Ross Noble doing there? Well, that's way weirder. That Ross yeah. Kemp was in yeah. Ranger Market with bodyguards. Well, I take it back. Yeah. Well, that's that's why I reacted yeah. the way I did because I thought yeah. Ross Noble was wandering around with armed guards. That's why wow. I said a documentary about dangerous Christmas markets. That's why I said Friday I got film. out of there. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I completely <laughs> got, got the end of the stick, didn't I? <laughs> Seemingly. Anyway, um, what were we talking about? Yeah, Festive Ross Noble markets. wasn't there. No, oh, no. But Ross Kemp might have been. Yes. Yeah, so Mikey's floppy topper. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tommy the Wank Engine who's very generous and says salmon sperm my time to shine salmon sperm also called uh oh, milt milt oh actually comes out spelled the sex way easily <laughs> it's all a matter of squeezing in the right place milt can even splooge when salmon get eaten by bears source wildlife major and forest worker happy holidays loves wow now i got a dm from tommy the wank engine who provided extra information about this and said they didn't want to put it all in their donation but uh, in case we're interested salmon sperm gets harvested quite often because a lot of pacific salmon are in decline so scientists specific salmon specific salmon I beg your pardon yeah the specific ocean so scientists will go harvest salmon semen as well as salmon eggs then cultivate them at a hatchery but if y'all if if y'all though getting salmon oh thought okay it it doesn't say thought but that's what it's meant to say if y'all thought getting salmon sperm was odd getting salmon eggs is even more interesting they have to cut the salmon's underside like they're opening a box and then thousands of small orange salmon eggs come flooding out this may sound cruel to kill the salmon mama but female salmon die very soon after laying their eggs anyway the trip back from their saltwater oceans to their freshwater homes really takes a toll on them so Cute. fuck them yeah so may as well cut them open i suppose <laughs> wow we've learned so much in this in this pod squad tommy the wank engine knows far too much about salmon jizz for my liking yeah, it's suspicious. yes what's yeah. up there tommy gracias mm. though thank you thank you very Jeez. much mr black mr the black nosed reindeer that's a bit of a stretch <laughs> mr black but thank you uh when are you joining pickaxe Jenny, will you marry me? I don't know oh if God. that's real. If that's real, you better give us an update. Go on, Jenny. But you should spend twenty pounds and get an actual message. Get a message, rather than put it in your- <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! What do you mean? No, the hell with you! Then we've fallen into a trap again. Oh, I see. I paused oh. halfway through the gag. Sorry, Jenny, Ben. Will, will you, read you those- marry me? Oh. What do you mean? No. Why the do we hell keep with doing you, this? Then? Oh. Must be stopped. I just assume that people. Because these, again, we do these in reverse order, so I assume that people don't understand and the gag goes the wrong way, <laughs> right? But smart. they've actually done it reversed so they that have. we read it out properly and it's, yeah. It's the mental gymnastics crazy, involved in the delivery of this joke and we fuck it up. It's, it's, yeah. I'm so, so That's sorry. That's our fault, that one. <laughs> it really, really is. Uh, you upset your mother, Ben, did I? She is crying now. Okay, there's there another go. one that I just hey, cut hey. off. Uh, Mr. Macker, the very generous shit December for wankers, who said, Merry Christmas, boys or girls, and girls or boys. I will be spending most of Chris, uh, most of December stacking fertilizer for 12 hours a day, six or seven days a week. Wow. I look forward to listening to Poddy. It's in the TJ Pod as background noise. Thank you for all your content. Wow. Oh, bless you. It really is a shit your... December. Shit December. <laughs> oh. Caroline slept with Cheggers. Oh. Newcastle upon D's nuts. <laughs> Just, <laughs> oh, I love Just keep swimming, Ash and Finn Tristram. My goodness, her. that was a big wow. old long old pod squad there. Such generosity. We super duper appreciate it. Thank you so much. We do. Everyone. Thank you you're, so much. You're fantastic. You. Once again, streamlabs.com forward slash podiest donations. Three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. Mikey. Yes. You got a question. It is indeed question time. We start our festive questioning with Kieran Marshall at show show or oh, show one K R N two two nine. I'm Shuriken. Sh- I don't know what that's supposed to be. Shuriken. It's Kieran. Hmm? Sh- Shuriken, like like a throwing star. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Shurikiran. Shurikiran. Oh, very good. There you go. He's cracked it. Is that it? That must be it. <laughs> I don't even have it written in front of me. Uh, You you (laughs) deciphered it better than I do, and it still looks like a jumble of letters to me. Well done. (laughs) This wasn't a triglyceride. Triglyceride, yeah. Oh, no. Trees don't exist anymore. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. What does everyone put out every year and smother in baubles, tinsel, and lights? Instead of the trusty old tree... What, what are you, what, trees what don't exist before? anymore that's kind of problematic for life yeah my first <laughs> thought wouldn't be oh what are we going to do at Christmas <laughs> <laughs> oh no this is our last Christmas of breathing air and then it's all going to hell do you know what I'm I think would look pretty good with baubles and tinsel all over it mm-hmm. Mr Blobby oh he would look beautiful 
Wouldn't he? So everyone has like a maybe a taxidermized blobby. Oh. We we open some sort of nature reserve somewhere in I don't know where. Maybe in Britain. Maybe somewhere with a warmer climate. And we breed huge herds of blobbies. <laughs> And then every year they get harvested by hunters. They get mm. stuffed and mounted and people pop them in the corner of the lounge with yeah. baubles and tinsel and a star on his head. Do so these- we... Yeah. yeah, do I have questions, Michael? Mm-hmm. Uh, you may have similar questions. I'm, I'm yes. ready to take questions now, please. <laughs> do we harvest the blobby meat? Um, is it sort of like, does he have an exoskeleton or does the blobby slowly rot over the course of, of a month? Well, yeah, they- I think... Like when you, I imagine that when you taxidermize an animal, they they empty it out and just put sand in it, right? So we take the blobby meat out, we fill him with, you know, sand or something. Mm -hmm. And the blobby meat, I feel, I don't know about you guys, I feel it's kind of, it's probably like some sort of pink yogurt inside. It's sort of tubby custard, I feel. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So that just gets potted Put, you put lids on it, and then it go, gets sold uh, to help your bones grow stronger. Do you think it'll be easy to harvest yourself? Because it could be like a turkey situation where you buy a blobby and you drain the blobby at home, and then mm. you decorate the blobby, and then you have dessert. Yeah, perhaps it's like when you buy lobsters or crabs at the supermarket, which I've never done, but you, the fancy supermarkets, you can buy them, and they're all still alive. They've just got their pincers tied up because that's how you cook them. Um, mm. So you go to the special... Blobby Mart, and there is just <laughs> in horrible bondage gear, all gagged up and hogtied. There are these blobbies that you have to take home, boil yourself, oh. and then, um, yeah, make delicious B-Y-O-B, strawberry yogurt. Boil your own blobby. <laughs> <laughs> what if you can we have a boil in the bag blobby? Oh, no. yeah, uh. blobbisons. <laughs> blobbisons. I want to yeah. know if, if you were like. Maybe if you cut a cross section of Blobby, would he have a shape in his meat like Billy Bear Ham? Yes. Would you have like a Blobby yes. face? Yes, Feldhoyer's meat company back at it again. <laughs> and then at the meat Blobby at the end, you could cut him open, remove all the sand, uh, fill him with air, and he'd be a little Blobby Babaloony. <laughs> oh, Peter, you're firing oh, all cylinders. You need to you need to come back down to earth where we are. Indeed. God, Pete, that's yeah, beautiful man. Do you have a suggestion, Mikey? I was just thinking, like, like you create a Christmas pile. Um, mm. So, like, on the fir- on the first day of December, <laughs> you lay down. Pile. Just you get just all... one big Christmas hemorrhoid <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> you do it, do it nicely. So you got there's like structure and chaos to it, and then the next day and every day of December after that, you slowly start peeling away the layers. Is at the middle of this festive pile are the Christmas presents? And so, what's it a pile of? I don't know. I didn't really think that far <laughs> yeah, that's, ahead. That's what I was wondering. It's closed it's just, or it's just a pile? Like, Christmas pile is anything that looks remotely Christmas related. So it could be Christmas jumpers, could be uh, DVD copies of uh, the fucking Elf. chicken run. Oh, chicken I, I, run. <laughs> for some reason I picture chicken run as the ultimate uh, Christmas film. Thanks to BBC playing it every year on Christmas. Yeah. It's just it's just all the Christmas gubbins you got, and as December goes on, you 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 start picking it up, tidying it, putting it back where it belongs, and then you get to Christmas Day, your presents are there, and all your Christmas stuff is packed away. Right? It's the okay. best. It's the it's the ultimate Christmas. Just telling you now. I like it. I think you've done it. <laughs> it's like you start unwrapping, you start wrapping, and then unwrapping, sort of for the whole of December. <laughs> but there's <laughs> presents inside the big present pile. Yeah, and like, you know, like in a normal advent calendar where you get a nice delicious bit of chocolate or a picture of a donkey or something with this, it's just endless tidying. Great. Yeah. Sounds awesome, man. Mm. <laughs> Sounds so good. How about you, Ben? Well, I mean, the answer's pretty obvious to me. Just just use a fake tree, right? <gasps> oh, yeah, Isn't like most people do already. <laughs> most people do. A tree that you put in the loft and then pull back down and you fold the branches down. Yeah. Just use a fake tree. That you can get them in different. silver, green. The cleanup's easier. There's no deforestation. I mean, we're all fucked anyway because there's no more oxygen left, apparently. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but it's a like fake a fake tree. It's like the the Lisa's wedding episode of The Simpsons where there's like a hologram and the guy goes and like kicks the. It's like a, a hologram of a tree and it's like fizzing and like broken. The guy goes and kicks the little plaque underneath it and it says. Uh, in memory of a real tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Uh, that'll be us soon. 
Right, thank you very much. Would anybody like to begin with their thing? Yeah, okay. I can, I can start. Oh, Peter, if you want to jump in. Oh, do I have to flip a 50p, boys? Oh, <laughs> careful. Why we might be better off with a 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mikey, you go first. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's Season go. of goodwill to all to all Mikeys. So. Thank you. Thank you, good sir. What an honour. Most of the Christmas traditions we take for granted today are Victorian inventions. Christmas trees, Christmas stockings and Christmas carols didn't exist much before the 1840s. Yet, while these are somewhat diverting, the most exciting and outrageous Victorian traditions have been almost fully forgotten. Oh. Indeed, in the early years of Queen Victoria's rule, Christmas rivaled spring break for sheer bawdiness and self-destruction. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Strap in. Nowhere more evident than in the bonkers Victorian parlor game of Snapdragon. Oh, that and sounds rad. Have you heard of this before? This is not a word that I've even read before, I don't think. I'm aware of the word Snapdragon. I think, is it a flower as well, a Snapdragon? It's definitely Ooh. a Some wrestling move. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. I've heard of it, but I don't know flower. if I've heard of it in this context. I'm not sure. Well, um, in the Christmas context, it's a game that's traditionally played on Christmas Eve. Players of Snapdragon must find themselves a broad, shallow ball and then prepare to risk their health. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting dangerous. Into this bowl should be poured two dozen raisins. No more, no less. <laughs> if <laughs> if raisins are hard to come by, almonds, grapes, or plums will suffice. Very quickly, there is yes. a legitimate raisin shortage in the UK at the moment because of Brexit. Just really? Put, you are that. kidding me. Well, there was... I don't know if it's like a national thing. You can probably still go and buy it. But there was, there was a post that some... I think it was like an Italian... Um, shop in london said we're unable to make such and such uh because of brexit and we don't we can't get the stuff we need and we will not apologize because we voted remain and some guy replied and said well i'll just get a delicious christmas pudding then and they replied and said well we're out of raisins as well where do you think they're grown kent and <laughs> just slammed him but uh, yeah i think, I think they spelled you. that final word wrong cunt. where do you think they're grown cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole so if we can't get raisins, what is the saddest Brexit alternative? <laughs> um, um, for Christmas pudding or for raisins? Just for, for raisins in okay. Mikey's game. Um, cashews. Oh, oh no, that's cashews. still Do quite we grow cashews here? Like chicken know. poppers from KFC or something. <laughs> 12 yeah, I don't think you probably can't grow pieces. cashews here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So once you've gathered your, your raisins or if out of stock KFC chicken, you should then pour an entire bottle of brandy into the bowl which you've laid on the floor oh. and on a, oh, sorry, onto a sturdy table. Turn the lights down low and then with appropriate panache, ignite the brandy. Oh. <laughs> to play Snapdragon, arrange your family and friends around the blazing bowl so that their faces are lit in a demonic fashion and then... One by one, take turns plunging your hands into the flames oh. in order to try and grab a raisin. What? It's ridiculous. That Who thought of this? Absurd. I swear to God, if they have to eat these on fire. <laughs> yep, you've got it right. Oh. If you can accomplish this, promptly extinguish the flaming raisin by popping it into your mouth and eating oh. it. The flaming raisin sounds like an old washed up 80s rocker. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, it's flaming raisin. It used to be the flaming grape and then he just withered <laughs> over time. <laughs> oh, fantastic. As one contemporary commenter wrote, the game, quote, provided a considerable amount of laughter and merriment at the expense of the unsuccessful competitors. Ah, yes, burn scars, lovely. It was so popular, in fact, that it was even celebrated in poetry. With his blue and lapping tongue, many of you will be stung. Snip, snap, dragon, for he snaps at all that comes. Snatching at his feast of plums, snip, snap, dragon dragon oh wow that's cool truly 
Truly an inspiring game. And for the steadfast Victorians, nothing announced it was Christmas morning better than blistered hands, burned lips, and a scorched palate. <laughs> Snapdragon was so much fun that it even had a non-seasonal variant named Flapdragon. Which, oh, oh okay. steady on. S- sniffed a flap, in which a lit candle was placed in a mug of ale Participants sought the drink, sought to drink from the mug without setting fire to their beards, mustaches, or hair. <laughs> so it seems, yeah, there's a lot of entertainment seems to surround, surround around getting burnt. <laughs> Good. But Snapdragon was not the only deranged Christmas pursuit on offer, for the Victorians were rel- relentless innovators in painful drun- drunken partying. Take Blind Man's Buff, for example still played today albeit in a watered down form this variant of tag sees one blindfolded player attempting to tag the others but the victorians played an altogether tougher version in which according to a contemporary chronicler it is lawful to set anything in the room in the way of folks to tumble over (laughs) whether it be to break arms legs or heads tis no matter (laughs) 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 fucking war zone version of of kill him Merry Christmas. Yeah, see if we can give Granddad a concussion while he hunts for us. <laughs> so painful and numerous were the injuries caused by playing bluff that it is rumoured that the game had been invented by country bone setters as a way of ensuring business. I don't Excuse me, what's a country bone setter? <laughs> that, that is, is a, I, a person who sets your bones once they're broken. Oh, God. That's their whole job. Well, back, I imagine, yeah, the well, they probably had other things to do as well. <laughs> I think they they had other jobs, but yeah, you would go to the country bone setter if you needed a bone set. That's oh mental. My God, mm. I'm just looking at pictures and it looks quite horrifying. There's lots of awful contraptions. No, thank you. I'm glad we live in the modern day of non. Stick one setters. on the Twitter thread. I'll, I'll find my favourite. Yeah, and if anyone still had energy for the evening, it could end with a game of hoop and hide. A similar, a similar a diversion, similar to hide and seek. Although it came with the caveat that if anyone was caught hiding <laughs> in or near a bed, they were they shot. Just- <laughs> oh, better than that, Peter. The dispute ends in kissing. Oh, sexy! So so <laughs> that's that's my fun little roundup of mainly mainly burning your mouth on some grapes, but uh, also kissing in bed for the sake of hide and seek. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Thank you all very much for joining me. Very good, Thank indeed, you, Michael. Thank you. Bring back the hey, bring back the Victorian period. Am I right? Yeah, it was oh, great. All right, Ty- typhoid, and <laughs> burnt plums, my favourites. Yeah, no COVID Sticking though. Chairs in front of blindfolded people. <laughs> good times. <laughs> Truly, the, yeah, the best best period we ever lived through. Well, we didn't live through, but that humanity ever faced. Yeah, take me back. Mm. Would you boys like a question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one comes from Harrison at Hazza on Twitter, who asks, Game approaches you with a request to concoct a new Christmas dinner in a can. Oh. What other meals would you jellify in order to create your own very own Christmas, Vidiot's Christmas dinner? So I guess this is this is our spin on for people who aren't aware. Game, the UK retailer, um, most years sells a tin of Christmas dinner, and it's every bit as disgusting as you could possibly imagine. Yes, it is indeed it is. But if we wanted to, you know, throw tradition out the window because <laughs> Christmas dinner is tradition, damn it. What, what we what would we put in our delicious Christmas meal? Well, uh, firstly, you might want to keep yeah. an eye out on Triple Jump because we may or may not have done something. Really, oh, no. really bad. Um, oh, yeah. no. Coming up soon on main menu. Uh, in terms of a meal I'd like to recreate, I think it's an obvious one, but we can definitely do the worst games ever meal in a tin. And I don't yeah. think it would be that bad, right? Are we going for no. gross factor or just like, wow, it actually kind of works? I think you want a little bit of niceness to it. I, I, I worry that the potato smileys would get soggy, though. There's oh, they definitely some... would. There's no yeah. preserving them. <laughs> well, maybe just to really... To add something extra and to potentially make it more disgusting, purely for, for japes, we could wash down the uh, the Worst Games Ever meal with the homemade cola syrup 
Um, oh, no. yeah, maybe on the no. top layer, that or the bottom is layer. Grotesque. That was supposed to be diluted like one part to eight parts water, which we didn't realize. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Just trying to. It was savory as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really bad. Uh, the worst games ever meal for people who don't know was uh, potato mm. smiley faces, chicken dippers, and beans. Baked yes. beans. But any other sort of beige food yeah. is sort of acceptable if you wanted beige. nugs or curly fries or mm-hmm. you know waffles potato grids waffles yeah yeah indeed I, th- I mean I that was going to be my answer so I'm not really sure what else I would suggest <laughs> I'm just thinking about mashed potato I think I'd, I'd have a bed of mashed potato in my can mm-hmm. and just so I've got something nice to eat I want like a, a slice of pizza that's been delicately rolled up so it just kind of slots Ooh, into the can okay. and then mashed potato yeah and then you use the pizza to dip like you know use the mashed potato as a dip I for some reason I think that'd be quite nice maybe I'm just a bit too obsessed with mashed potato but well, remember that it would have to be special mashed potato that can hold in a tin for a long period of time <laughs> and reheat okay so it'll probably be not good mashed potato no I don't well I think most things put in a tin turn to not good variants of themselves so I think mm-hmm. I'm just going to have my sad beans. Christmas and beans uh, beans are yeah what is the, the like the benchmark for like putting stuff in in tins because it seems like you can do anything I don't Meat, want spam fine but I'll have Ooh. beans yeah 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 yeah. trust anything that hasn't lived before being put in the tin <laughs> yeah or bread bread like is that like the cheeseburger in a tin I think I've seen around before oh yeah oh, remember that j- that chicken in a tin that absolutely oh, disgusting God, all the just grease it's oh. just jelly yeah. in the shape of a chicken when it comes out oh, I'm gonna have to oh, it's just you're gonna have to terrible. what do you have to yeah yeah <laughs> I'm googling it right now I'm no. gonna have to add it to the thread it's so disgusting there's the gif of Miley Cyrus twerking that oh that yeah goes into that and it's really bad. No. It's the baddest. It's get it's, the cream. It's getting Bring worse. me to mummy. <laughs> uh, here it is in the chat. Oh, I don't okay. want to see it. I don't have to see it, but I'm going to look at it anyway. How dare you? Oh, God, it's <laughs> how, so slimy. How dare you? It's absolutely abhorrent, isn't it? Sweet Sue's tanned hold, canned whole chicken, not tanned. I wish it was tanned. It's so, it's, it's so pale. pale. <laughs> Can I add that to the thread? Do you think? Well, I've already added it. So okay, <laughs> it's up there. Mm, good, tasty, good, good. fantastic, uh, fantastic. One of you boys yeah. like to do a thing? Yeah, I would. I would. So this is a story that I had already seen. Actually, I was thinking of bringing it along and then uh, Jack Squires at J Squires underscore comedy on Twitter also DM'd it to me so I thought hey yeah sure I'm with you let's do it Um, so this is according to The Sun excellent newspaper (laughs) The Scum sorry as they call it on Twitter yeah Uh, written by Lottie Tip Lady Bishop wow wow that's a a name that's That's an incredible surname tip lady hyphen bishop um bone setter (laughs) country (laughs) lottie country bone setter uh here we go then christmas grinch i spent 85 oh no sorry there's no it's just christmas grinch and then it continues I spent £85 on a Grinch visit only for him to trash my house and pour a bottle of juice on my son. Juice! <laughs> juice is in all caps. Sounds a like mom, value for money. That's a great. I know. A mum was furious after paying £85 for a quote-unquote Grinch experience that left her house totally trashed. Laura McGill said she was disgusted by the experience <laughs> after the Grinch, in air quotes, smashed eggs on her floor, covered the kitchen tiles in fairy liquid, and poured <laughs> juice, again in caps, <laughs> on her son. Um, she wrote on Facebook, quote, So, paid £85 for Grinch visit, advertises the Grinch to come in, mess the kid's bed... I mean, let's not even think about what that means. Mm -hmm. Have pillow fights, put toilet rail around your Christmas tree and pictures at the end. (laughs) Laura goes on. 
Versus what I got, every single bit of party food, expensive cupcakes thrown all over the place, tree decorations broke, fairy liquid poured on my kitchen floor, eggs smashed, a full bottle of juice poured over my floor juice. and... Juice. No, it's, all, it's lowercase, but oh, she does say, shit. juice poured over my floor and son, in all caps. <laughs> Kids new onesie ruined. Highly do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Emailed and complained. No reply. The Grinch definitely came and stole Christmas. Never been so disgusted in my life. Um, Laura also said the experience advertised pictures with the kids, but she kicked the Grinch out before they could snap any pictures <laughs> as she was fuming. I am fuming. <laughs> the <laughs> the mum accompanied her post with pictures showing the carnage caused by the mystery Grinch. Oh, my God, yes. (laughs) I'll send them in a sec. Laura's delicious-looking spread featuring cookies, Grinch cupcakes, crisps, dips, and all manner of other delicious treats have been smeared across her spotless living room floor. Now, there's no before picture of her living room floor, so I don't know where they're getting that it was spotless in the first place, but never mind. Uh, So I will send this. To the chat. There it is. Oh, that is quite a mess, to be fair. Oh, it's loading. It is. That's rough. Um, Oh, full 12 as well. What a bounty. That's a banging, banging selection of food. It is. And there's a bigger picture of the... (laughs) (laughs) Um, So... The, the article then goes in to fill its word count quota by just describing the picture, saying, A pink feather boa, silver tray, and what appears to be a rogue Christmas decoration also join the chaos. Um, but then it continues, some, media, uh, some social media users couldn't understand why Laura was so upset. Chris tweeted, Paid for the Grinch, got the Grinch. No pleasing some people. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Carl Rigby wrote, So you invited and paid someone to come to your house to wreck it and are unhappy with the dedication and care he showed to his craft. You do realise who the Grinch is, don't you? He isn't particularly fond of Christmas. Uh, And Tennessee Kell added, Some bloke dressed as the Grinch literally rocked up, trashed the joint and then got paid for it. This is the best thing ever. Um, That's then the end of the article, but The Sun did a poll at the bottom which was, do you have sympathy for the mum? Um, (laughs) 11.1% of people said, hmm, I'm on the fence. 48% of people said, no, she ordered the Grinch. (laughs) And uh, 40.2% of people said, yes, that was too extreme. Wow, the Grinch wins. Yeah, she got what she expected. Yeah. Um, Now there's a follow-up to this story. (laughs) Oh, goody. This is written by Lottie Tip Lady Bishop on the sun.co.uk. <laughs> Grinch gripe. I paid £65 for the same Grinch that trashed that <laughs> mum's house and poured juice on her son. No. My kids made more mess than he did. <laughs> There's no winning. What is happening? <laughs> A Christmas mad mum has hit out after a Grinch experience went viral for destroying another woman's home. Emma Neville booked the grumpy green creature in for a food fight and some Christmas pranks a few years ago. Sorry, is that that Eminem's sister, Emma Neville? Yes, it is. Uh, Here's a picture from Emma's party. It's a bit sinister, really. (laughs) Why would anyone want... Okay, I just don't, don't understand why anyone would want this. Rather okay. than just oh. get someone to come over playing Santa. Look at him. <laughs> I know, like, it's so horrible. You get the um, joy of being wholly uncomfortable in your own house as a stranger walks around. <laughs> well, so this story of this allegedly the same Grinch makes it sound like he was really uncomfortable. So the article continues. The 34-year-old has slammed the idea that the Grinch caused havoc, telling the son, we were warned he didn't like Christmas and would cause a bit of trouble, as I'm sure the other woman was also. Emma from Larne, Northern Ireland, explained, We had a fabulous experience, and my children caused much more havoc than the Grinch did. The company warned when booking he may be a bit naughty. Honestly, I think he got a shock when my kids started a full-on food fight with him. 
The mum told how she paid £65 for the experience in 2018 for her niece Chloe, now 12, and her son Lewis, uh, 13, and daughter Jade, 6. She said... The Grinch was very respectful for the fact that my tree had glass decorations and very apologetic when leaving, even though I assured him my kids were responsible for the majority of the mess. Um, The Grinch was very respectful. He was, and apologetic (laughs) as he left. Laura McGill reportedly from... Oh, yeah, that that just then uh, gives you a recap of the previous article. Um, But then uh, this one says... Oh, wait, let me scroll down a bit. Uh... So, yes, uh, but Grinch fans have rallied round to defend the creature's behaviour, including Emma. She said, I let my kids crack on when the Grinch chucked a few chicken nuggets, but my kids lifted the whole plates and bowls and threw them back. (laughs) Poor Grinch. You can't have a kid's party and not expect a mess, she said. Uh, She wanted to share her positive experience after the post went viral. Uh, she said he was more apologetic, feeling uh, he he was more than apologetic, feeling like he instigated it. But by all means, my kids took it too far. The Northern Irish Christmas Experience Company also posted to Facebook after the incident went viral, and that's the uh, the company in charge of this Grinch, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Santa Stop Here posted a most wanted picture featuring the character and it, and its naughty elf. Uh, and the post warns, if you see these Hallians at your door, do not let them in or havoc will follow. After Laura's complaint, the Grinch himself released a statement via the North <laughs> Belfast franchise saying only, I am the Grinch that stole Christmas and I am sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> the company said it had received no other complaints in three years. And there's one final sort of dingy, slightly creepy picture of the Grinch. Here, just <laughs> this is going to be a memory the... that these kids have when they're in their 20s and they're going to ask each other, was that Grinch? <laughs> but did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> did the Grinch come over and throw chicken nuggets at us and mum got cross? <laughs> did that happen? Now, I, I've got a final uh, related story that ties into these two articles now this is a personal anecdote from a friend of a friend okay Uh, fantastic so this is uh not known to readers of the sun um so they uh this is someone old enough to have children i don't i don't know this person but i've heard it as i say through a friend uh she ordered a grinch experience to come over to her house she paid 150 pounds Right? This bloke turns up, just this like young Geordie man, because it's like a local local person. Mm-hmm. This this like Geordie turns up. First thing he this is true, I swear this is true. First thing he did when he came through the door was asked if she had a can of something. <laughs> right? And then he brought a smoke machine and then he played one game with the kids where he lined up four turnips at the front of the room and they all had a go at throwing them into a bucket, right? (laughs) And then he got up and said to the lady, I'll be back in an hour to pick up my smoke machine and left. What? (laughs) What a hero. This honestly (laughs) happened. 150 quid. That is... I would honestly rather someone came around and threw juice all, juice all over juice. my floor. But that's the Grinch experience. I think that that anecdote is the most Grinch thing that we've talked about so far. He's self-aware. He understands. Yeah. I need to be drunk to get through this. I've played one bad game. I'm going. And I'll <laughs> yeah. be back for some reason. I'll be back to get my smoke machine. Don't know why I can't take it now. Um, <laughs> He's doing another party. God, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep them turnips in good condition son I've got three more tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't bruise them <laughs> wow uh, that was fantastic thank so, you very much the Grinch is a really stealing Christmas this year I suppose this must happen every year because it's a certainly a three year old company the one that was written about in the sun and uh, you know it must have been happening for a while but yeah these two stories and then um, I was I was told by a friend that that had happened to their their friend which is baffling wow um god thank you lottie tip lady bishop for that (laughs) thank you i can't think of anything worse anything worse to spend my money on no absolutely not 
No, I kind of want to do it now to see what happens. I want to find like the extreme Grinch version, like with doesn't hold back, and see where that ends up. Yeah. Oh dear. Would you boys like a question? Yes. Yes. This one's coming at you fast from Beefy Clyro at Mister Harder on Twitter. Secret Santa time, except it's really secret. Mm. What mm. gift are you getting? No, you don't get to know who's receiving it. Only that it's someone you know. So if you had to go into a Secret Santa in the in the most secret form, where you don't even know where you, who you're buying it for, would you go? Would you would you give him a special treat or something just utterly ridiculous? I think. Mm. I mean, the safest thing to do would be to buy like, uh, like a a selection box or something, right? But yeah, that's not a very interesting answer. So I'd maybe I'd just go full weird, just like buy the strangest thing I can. I reckon, yeah. If it says like a set amount of money, a ten, I just go to Poundland and just fill your boots, get ten, yeah. ten lovely crap items, maybe like a jar of Nutella and yeah. some crap Christmas decorations and a nose hair trimmer or whatever you may fancy. Mm-hmm. I think they even sell little one pound vibrators. If you really Why want not? It. They do. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? And Why you could buy festive. ten vibrators for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> what a Christmas deal! Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of uh, Secret Santa, and I've only done one once. Um, and I spent the entire, <clears throat> excuse me, spending limit, which was probably a fiver or something like that, um, on Sainsbury's own milk chocolate. And I bought oh. about tw- maybe 20 bars of it <laughs> and just stacked Christ. it up and wrapped it. And that was my Chris- That was my Secret Santa. Did you see them open it? Yeah. What did? They, how was? What was their reaction? I mean, they weren't thrilled. They weren't sad or disappointed. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I'd rather get an absurd amount of shit, the worst chocolate imaginable, than <laughs> you know, some fucking st- uh, stuffing stock. Uh, fuck, what am, I, what am I trying to say? Stocking, stocking stuffer. Filler. There we are. Stuffer. Yeah, you know, like the stuff you get from Menkind, the world's Ugh. most pointless shop, where it's you know, mm. play golf on the toilet. When are you ever <laughs> really? going to use that? Come on. Yeah. yeah. That's just a graveyard for plastic things that'll end yeah, up in, in the bin after five minutes. You just, mm-hmm. It's stuff you buy for people you don't know well enough to try. And then in January, <laughs> all of the charity shops are filled to bursting mm-hmm. with shit presents and stupid books. Like those. Like, have you seen those um, Ladybird books that they made? That are like they're in they're in the style of like old yes, books from like the seventies and eighties. Yeah, the gang and, get nan online. I've got what. Yeah, got exactly. <laughs> and it's like whenever the first time you see those, this they became like they came out like two or three years ago now. They've originally and like when you first see them, you're like, oh, that's clever. That's that's fun. And then you you consider them for like more than like fifteen seconds, and and then you're like. Right. I mean, I, I would read that once, and then what? What do what do I do with that? You know, mm. the jokes immediately get old. Like, I, I'm not going to laugh twice at any of the lines in there, and you just give it to charity. You know. Yep. Yeah. So they keep evolving as well. It's like there's, there definitely was a Brexit one at some point. There's definitely yeah. a COVID one oh, now. Yeah. Big just, time. Please stop. So we're just getting a voucher, right? Yeah, that yeah. sounds nice and safe, isn't just it? Just a gift Let card. Just put the cash in, yeah. cash in a card. Yeah. Just give them the monetary value of the secret Santa. You just do it yourself. Or just be insulting. And if the budget is a tenner, just put a fiver in a <laughs> yeah. card. <laughs> yeah, and a receipt for a McDonald's. Yeah. Got hungry. <laughs> With the know. words, thanks, written on the bottom. <laughs> You're too kind. Yeah, oh, I like that. Fucking hell. I donated your allowance to charity. Congratulations. You have just bought um, uh, some slippers for a donkey. Yay. Yeah. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that. At least with those, sometimes you get a picture of the animal, or at least a animal. Do. With a similar yeah. G- sim- the stock similar type. image of a donkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I joke, but uh, Amy gets... Um, she. She sponsors a donkey via a gift every year. Like someone, someone yeah, buys it for her every do, time. Yeah, and they continue to renew it for her because she loves it, and she gets <laughs> correspondence oh. from the donkey. Yeah, the donkey she... <laughs> sent her an email. <laughs> yeah, um, although she's now um, so her her donkey is called Harbin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you get a newsletter that tells you what all the donkeys at the sanctuary have been up to. And she's now like got her eye on a another donkey. I think she'll she'll always stick with Harbin. 
but she's <laughs> read of another donkey that is asthmatic and had to go on a nebulizer Aww. at one point and she once had to go on a nebulizer in the back of an ambulance and so she's like Aww, oh connection same mate one yeah she wants to yeah so maybe uh, maybe she can sponsor two donkeys I think so pay for Aww. some inhalers for that <laughs> other one <laughs> Mikey yes have you heard of the Christmas song Dominic the Donkey no <laughs> you haven't no, see, I haven't either, Mikey. This is a thing. No, this this is... I mean, it doesn't look familiar. It's what a real is the, what song, is this? and you should all listen to it. Uh, it came on on, the, on Spotify at work, on the Alexa, and then it came on at our work Christmas party as well. And it's what? it's a real song. It's Dominic the Donkey, the Italian Christmas Donkey. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's a good song. It's not good, but it's good for that reason, so you should, you know... Educate yourselves. I just thought you might know oh, it. I'm just I'm listening to to softly in the background. It's very it's very cute. It's got like bouncy fifties kind of weirdness to ding, it. Ding, ding, ding. Eat up, eat I could I, I, at a Christmas party. I could if I had a few beers in me, I could get up Storm and have a jolly old dance donkey. to this. Do, 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 do. Ben had had a few beers in him at the Christmas party when it came on, and he very quickly made his way all the way across the room <laughs> to get Peter. Peter, Amy. This is it. This is. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. This is yeah, Dominic the donkey again. It's on. <laughs> yeah. It's great. <laughs> oh, and we said, who's it by? And you were like, I've no idea. Peter's just Doesn't replied matter. from his personal it's... account with a big picture of the Grinch to the video. Oh, so I have. <laughs> it's a selfie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well done, Peter. Awful. <laughs> Fucking awful. Well. There it goes. I have Deletes. a thing. <gasps> yeah. It's a festive themed, not the onion. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I've got five news stories. I've got five onions you have to throw them in the bucket. Some of them uh, I'll be back for my smoke machine. Some of them might be fake. Some of them might be real. Some of them are sexy. Some of them are genuinely Ooh. lovely. And some are really weird. So it's up to you to decide what's what. I have, of course, as usual, changed up the titles of these news stories to sort of mask their true intent. I will read through mm -hmm. all of them and then we'll go back through and you can tell me if you think it's real or if you think it's a The Onion article. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Sure am. First one. OAP, with no meat on his bones, is gifted Christmas jumper. Okay. Ooh. Next okay, one. Interesting. Christmas movie deemed too outdated for TV by broadcasters. Okay. Right. Mysterious stranger litters on gardens across Edmonton. <laughs> Disgusting Christmas crime committed by food corporations. And oh, finally... You've taken Christmas the jokes crime. out of all of these, so it's yeah, hard to... Pretty straight. And finally, yeah. Egyptian Christmas awaits lonely Nana. <laughs> <laughs> It just sounds like they're going to team her up and leave yeah, her. Yeah, it does. <laughs> She's going to be embalmed. <laughs> so, yeah, to be clear, usually with the Not The Onion articles, I choose articles that sound like they could be from The Onion because they're that ridiculous. A lot of these are just kind of nice Christmas stories. So I've massively, you know, hidden uh, what, they, what they're actually about. Right, okay. okay. Okay, So here we go. First one again. OAP, with no meat on his bones, it says in quotes, is gifted Christmas jumper. Is that real? Or is it the onion? Um, I mean, it could just be a nice story of like perhaps a, <laughs> yeah. a very old, frail man. Uh, I'm, I, I instantly went in the direction of maybe this is like a statue of a skeleton with no meat on his bones that they decided to gift a Christmas jumper to <laughs> rather than changing out with a Santa. I'm going to say real. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to say real as well. And I've said real because I remember what it is. Oh. <laughs> when Mikey said a statue, I think I know. Ooh, this is okay. a T-Rex, isn't it? Wow. There it is. T-Rex gets Christmas Look jumper at, at the Natural History Museum in London. I saw this. Brilliant. Oh my god, that's incredible. A giant Big Christmas arms. jumper has been created for a Tyrannosaurus Rex at London's National, National History Museum. The animatronic T-Rex is sporting the festive knit, which has been made by a family-run firm in Leicester. Cute. Lovely. There we are. It's absolutely delightful. Someone can tweet that for me. I'd appreciate it. Lovely Christmas. It Christmas now. mud. Uh, next news story. Christmas movie deemed too outdated for TV by broadcasters. 
I'm going to say the onion. I'm going to say true, because maybe there's like a dicey scene in an old Christmas film like that. We're not having that anymore. Oh, it's okay, a good eye, Peter. True. It's an onion. Whoa. The actual headline is, TV network refuses to air Miracle on 34th Street for outdated depictions of hope and joy. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, there we are. Uh, mysterious stranger litters on gardens across Edmonton. That just sounds like a newspaper boy or something. <laughs> Well, I think it's, whether it's true or not, oh, I think yeah. it might be a reference to Santa, maybe like dropping stuff. But it'll either be some joke about, some onion joke about Santa, like littering from from his sleigh, you know, as he flies over. Or it might be some like cute display that's been done somewhere where like the kids wake up and, oh, oh. Santa's like dropped snow fairy magic he's been flying over doing a preliminary flight wow. and he's oh look he's there's some crumbs of mince pies or some you oh. know like when they put footprints of the easter bunny and stuff like that mm. you know so yeah. i'll say real mikey I'm, I'm i'm gonna go with the onion to be a contrarian it's real Oh. 400 Ooh. families woke up on Christmas to $250 gift card left outside with a poem. Anonymous gifts totaling $100,000. Oh, Whoa. wow. This Holy is from moly. last Christmas. A, Do we have the poem? A, yes, I can see it. I don't know you, but I know you opened the Secret Santa envelope. This year we all felt at the end of the rope. So I hope this little gift lifts your hopes. The, world, the whole world ain't as dark as it sometimes seems. There's light if you look for it, if you know what I mean. The next six months, every day, gets lighter and longer. Still standing after 2020, you'll emerge stronger. For someone in need, oh, wow. you'll be their first responder. You're a fighter. You are tested. You will conquer. What it is that you set out to do, remember to just believe in you. Don't need this? Please pass the bat on, for that is the way hope carries on. There we are. Oh, uh, Saint Nick, who chooses sweet. to remain nameless, left envelopes containing an inspirational rhyme along with $250 gift cards on approximately 400 doorsteps, bringing unexpected cheer to the families within. So there you are. It's oh, not the best delightful. poem in the world. It's not great, is it? The rhyming was kind of all <laughs> over the place. I was expecting yeah. not the same rhyme for, for, for four lines, but there we are. Uh, yeah. Well, nice, yeah. That's lovely, though. Nice story, isn't it? Nice story. Yeah. Uh, in quotes, disgusting... Cry, uh, Christmas crime committed by food corporations. God, this could be anything. Mm, I will just say real because corporations do bad things. <laughs> Mike, yeah, you. I'm going to say uh, onion. Maybe it's some crime against food that yeah. people are releasing Christmas. Could well okay, be. Take a look at that. Oh, yeah, okay. Terry's and oh. Heinz produce and it says in quotes, world's first chocolate orange mayonnaise. <laughs> God, no. Are you sure? Are we all sure this is the world's first? Has anyone checked? <laughs> Fans of the Terry's chocolate orange can enjoy the festive treat in mayonnaise form this, this Christmas oh. following an unlikely oh. partnership with Heinz. In a move set to divide fans of the stocking filler favourites, Terry's has joined forces with Heinz to create the world's first festive mashup that you didn't know you needed in the form of their chocolate orange mayo. Why not just team up with Nutella instead? Yeah. Or like some sort of yeah. sweet, like like even a jam company, something that's sweet. It's being marketed and they you can't buy them. Uh, 200 jars can be won in a competition running until the 13th of December, so a couple of weeks ago. Shit, we missed it. Right, we so they've just it. done it to make headlines. We missed it, yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a load of shit, basically. But they know that it sounds terrible. The write-up describes it as a sweet thing, that you put on sweet things. Uh, so the blend yeah. of mayonnaise and chocolate orange segments, cream patissiere, I think, I don't know, and an extra dose of orange oil is a smooth and delicious spread that works perfectly dolloped onto your festive desserts or spread onto brioche, crumb pits pancakes or croissant this festive season the two brands claim it says uh so yeah the two brands lie fucking awful oh, and finally God, it's terrible, terrible. It's got that tang that meal tang oh yeah i know i know but if they disguise it so much to the point where it tastes sweet then peter's right why not just do chocolate spread i don't understand yeah doesn't make terrible. sense 
Final one. Egyptian Christmas awaits lonely Nana. <laughs> <laughs> She's not, she's not chocolate this time. <laughs> I, it, it, it's just, I just, what do you oh, think, Mikey? My mind's running with this one. What is an Egyptian Christmas? It sounds like something the mob do to you. <laughs> well, I did say that one of them would be sexy. My, 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 my gut's telling me this is onion. Mm. So I, my gut's been wrong for a lot of this. I'm, I'm going to say, fuck it, this is a real story of some some Egyptian loving Nana out there. Grandma's guts are telling her it's true. <laughs> Brit Gran, 82, to spend Christmas between the sheets with Egyptian toy boy, 36. Whoa. Oh. An 82-year-old grandmother who is married to her 36-year-old Egyptian toy boy has said she plans a Christmas day between the sheets. Iris Jones has never been shy of talking about her sex life with her husband, Mohammed, who is 46 years younger than her. She said in the past that her husband is her pharaoh and has shared graphic details of the couple's sex life, <laughs> admitting she loves shocking people. There you go. <laughs> My God. Egyptian Christmas Iris. for Nana. Yeah, good for her. Well done. Maybe there will be chocolate Nana at some point. Who knows what these, what these guys are into. Right? Oh, jeez. Goodness me. <laughs> Get some of that Terry's chocolate orange mayo in there. Mayo, yeah. Slapping. Hoping to win the competition. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's my news. Wow. Um, Absolutely. Thanks for that. Uh, just, a bro- just a scatter shot of festive joy question mark. Mm. Every human emotion was felt in the last 10 minutes. Fantastic. <laughs> and I've done my job. <laughs> Would you boys like one final question? Yeah. Yes, please. Let's go with Dean the DM at Dean the DM on Twitter. Nice easy one. What's your dream advent calendar? Be it chocolate, Lego, beer, hot sauce, anything you can dream of. Ooh. I've had a Lego advent calendar before and I did really enjoy it. It does sound like a lot of fun. It does. Yeah. Um, do, you, is it, do you get little things to make um, every day or is it one big thing? That well, that's what I was about to say. So the one that I had, it was a Star Wars Lego one that my mother-in-law-to-be bought for me, which is very kind of a... I think they're pretty expensive as well because, you know, Lego is stupidly expensive. So it's way more than just a little chocolate behind each door in terms of value. But um, each one was like a tiny little build, which was really like... It was cool. Like, there was one that was like a really little uh, version of... Poe Dameron's X-Wing, like a black X-Wing. That was probably the best one. Um, but then sometimes you just get a little minifigure. Uh, and sometimes, you you know, you do make a tiny version of like a ship or a building or something. Um, and I did like that. But then at the end, you're left with just this, with 24 tiny little Lego builds. And you don't really know what to do with them other than put them in a box of Lego and reuse them later. So yeah. what might be better, and I'm sure this probably exists, is you know, like a medium-sized Lego build that's just split into 24 parts with instructions. And so maybe yeah. you just build a little bit more of it every day and then right at the end, you've got a final, you know, a more of a substantial model. So mm. yeah, that may well already exist, but I would love some kind of, uh, yeah, Lego 24-day build, whether it's Star Wars themed or, you know, anything. I just, I enjoy, I enjoy doing Lego. Yeah, um, it was Did a little Desperate bit of it over the past Lego. year or so. I think I've got some Lego for Christmas as well. Oh, so. You lucky boy. Do you know what kind of Lego it is? Is it yeah. the sort of the red house off of the 60s that everyone made with their hand-me-down Lego? Oh, sadly not. No. <laughs> okay. It might be. So I've um, last year I got two of the Star Wars helmets. They've done like a series where you build the helmet and then it gets mounted on this little Lego plinth. Oh, nice. So I've got Boba Fett's helmet and I've got a... Uh, where is it? It's a Stormtrooper up there. Mm. And I know there's a Darth Vader one. Um, so it may well be another one for that collection or it might be something completely different. I don't know, Ooh. but I'm just aware that someone who often buys me Lego has got me a box that is making a jingly noise <sighs> when I put it under the tree. So <gasps> Peter, I think you know to assume it's Lego. You know. Yeah. I'm very excited. Lots of mini sachets of Heinz chocolate, orange mayo. Ooh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Jangle, jangle. Delicious. Oh, Put it on your dog. What do you even do with that? Do you put it on savory food or put it on sweet food? I'm you genuinely show people lost with them. and they go, oh, that sounds horrible. And they might dip their little finger in and go, 
oh, that's not as bad as I thought, or, oh, that's awful, and then it goes at the back of the cupboard until you die, and then you're... You probably just keep it sealed, because there's only 200 of them, and some crazy person will spend a reasonable amount of money on it in about 50 years' time. Yeah, maybe. I mean, not even that much. They probably spend, like, £100 tops. Yeah. It's not going to be a huge collector's item, no. but... I'm going to have a look on eBay now. Yeah, see what's Well, they're not out yet, are they? Or are you going to look for other well, I, the limited edition Well, the competition ended a few spreads? days ago, so I'm just wondering. Oh, okay. Heinz. Yeah, maybe they've already shipped it out. Chocolate. I can spell chocolate. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Orange. Mayo. I'm just Googling chocolate mayo to see if that brings up anything. No, nah, it's not there. Uh, oh. The only thing that's coming up are Wiener Schnitzel Chili Sauce. Three cans. Can. Secret recipe. Limited edition. New. 15 ounces. That's the best result you got for chocolate mayo. Pottery barn Santa hat platter tray Christmas holiday shaped plate decor. Rare. These are both from the United States. That's the only two entries. Weird. Yeah, don't know. What's your oh. dream advent calendar? I'm just I'm sorry. I'm just I'm scrolling through the Daily Mail because there's not there's a review of the chocolate mayo here by. Oh, is um, there? By who's this by? Bride Pearson Jones. Um, she said uh, she looked. It was skeptical at first. So the texture looked like a very thin mayonnaise and it looked overly oily. But she persisted and spread it onto a, a bagel. And the flavor is just like a terrace chocolate orange, but the texture is more like butter. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh that sounds really abhorrent. No. Why would I, why would they do this? She, oh my god! It looks. Oh. <laughs> She's got a big. It literally just looks like. Butter. Oh. Brown butter. <laughs> Someone's wiped their ass on her bagel. Yeah. That is absolutely disgusting. What the hell? That's 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 a bottom sneeze on a bit of bread. That is. That's <laughs> I don't like that phrase at all. <laughs> Deary me. I guess my my dream advent calendar would be one that doesn't contain any of this, but I want I want a, an advent calendar, a variety advent calendar, so it's not just the same thing every day. Not committed to one thing for the entire period. Every day is a complete surprise of what oh, it is. Oh, you've maybe got you no idea what you're gonna get. Yeah, maybe you could get a little Lego, a little chocolate, a little baby, little drink or something. Mm. It could be anything. An old gem. Oh, a treasure map leading <laughs> you to the the hidden Christmas treasure. Anything could happen. Wow. But probably not that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I saw a thing. I'm, oh, I'll never be able to find this now. I'm going to Google it while Ben gives his answer. But I saw a thing on Twitter the other day where someone said, we we bought like a really cheap advent calendar from China and uh, they were opening the doors and it was supposed to have a different toy inside each one. And one of them was like, <laughs> the first one was like just a really shit toy. The second one was... Um, uh, like a bait for a fishing line. You know, there's like things that look <laughs> like little fish. Yeah, a lure, yeah. that's it. Yeah, with hooks on it. So they're like, Christ, imagine like getting this for a, a child. So they said, um, we're, we're sticking to opening one door at a time and we can't wait to see what happens for the rest of the year. In fact, maybe if I search for lure, that might, that might get it. Um, it does sound good. Jesus. Um, my... Dream advent calendar. I'm not entirely sure. I've I've barely touched my advent calendar. I don't, I've just not been not been feeling it. So I, I've had like the first few days, and then and then I've kind of left it. And I should I should return to it. Really, uh, I think a nice idea for an advent calendar in a number of ways. A, if you're a video game fan, and B, to shine a light on small creators, is to maybe get a very very small thirty minute to an hour indie game each day that you oh, can just yeah. Yeah. sit there and play for half an hour and you and you like the kind of game that you play for half an hour and then go cool i get it that was great i really enjoyed that and then just put it down and you you know there's no pressure to go back to it or get a hundred percent or play through a 20 hour story or whatever just just a little little bite-sized so, video game experience every day i think that might be nice that sounds mm-hmm. absolutely wonderful, and I'd be very upset if that's not been done before because that's a, be a million-dollar idea, not, Ben. But yeah, I'll be I'll be fucked if I'm organising it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's that. That's a free one for you all. Have yeah, fun. go on. Someone do something with that. Do it for charity. You know those uh, those guys over at uh, Humble Bundle could do something. I'm sure if they haven't already. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Did you find it, Peter? Uh, I found 
I found this uh, advent calendar. So it's an unofficial D&D advent calendar that someone's <laughs> mum got for them from China. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. The pictures on the front look like they've just been photoshopped together from various franchises. I'm pretty sure the one in the middle, hang on, let me just send you this. Mm. I think the one in the middle is like the their youthful empress from The NeverEnding Story or whatever her name was, something like that. Uh, but the other characters there are definitely not from The NeverEnding Story. Some of them are live action, some of them are CG. Is that uh, Brendan Fraser at the bottom? It's not, is it? It looks a bit like oh, Brendan Fraser. it's a Fraser. bit like, like yeah, Quentin yeah, Tarantino and Brendan Fraser's son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Following a Facebook ad, Twitter user Bad D and D advice purchased what they described as two unlicensed D and D advent calendars and encouraged their followers to buckle up for what's already shaping up to be a roller coaster countdown. <laughs> and it's got the tweets. So my mum saw these two unlicensed D and D advent calendars for sale from a sketchy Facebook ad site in September. Buckle up. Here's a list of what they found so far. Behind the first door was a fishing lure with some particularly sharp-looking hooks on it. That's a quote. Um, the second door opened to reveal an egg filled with rubber dinosaurs. <laughs> Speculations about what the rubber dinosaurs are, uh, or what they're for, is rife. One commenter suggested the OP submerged them in water in case they grow. Another suggested they are erasers. However, they neither grew nor erased. <laughs> it says. Next came what the owner of the D&D advent calendar refers to as a dinosaur monolith. Uh, is there a picture? This is a great idea for some content, though. This time next year, Peter, we need to buy a couple of advent calendars from Wish. We do. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) The dinosaur monolith is just this. It's just a little purple pip thing. I don't don't know what that is. I've just Um, Googled um, advent calendars from AliExpress. I found one that's the, the... The ultimate rock collection for kids. Stimulate children's curiosity and interest. It's an advent calendar of rocks. It's just <laughs> gravel that they picked up out of someone's driveway. Oh, dear. Wow. Um, and then they got more dinosaurs the next day. They seem to have mostly got dinosaurs and more of those little blue blue things. Mm. Um, but apart from the, the weird fishing lore at the beginning, I don't know what that's about. Um, so... Oh, there was a rubber duck in one. Oh, um, that's cute. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, no, there wasn't. They just, I think they just brought a rubber duck for for scale mm-hmm. on the photo. Oh, there was some Lego in one with like an Among Us character. Uh, <laughs> wow, some real variety. Anyway, um, I'll I'll leave that to the to the audience to go and search for if they want to find out the thrilling conclusion because that will be going on until the end of Advent. So, um, yeah, uh, just Google it. Advent calendar, D and D, unlicensed. They've described it as fantastic. Well, is that all our questions, Mikey? That's all. Then. We did it, everyone. Thank you so much for all your questions. We hope you've enjoyed the things mm. and the podcast. And uh, thank you so much again for all of your support this year on Podiots. We really appreciate it. It's uh, it's genuinely a pleasure to do it. But obviously, it is something that we have to come home from our full day of doing content creation to then do content creation in our spare time as yeah. well. And we we couldn't have a nicer and more wonderful group of people to do it for than you guys so thank you thank you uh, for all your kind words and generosity and support on merch and uh, donating on charity streams and checking us out triple jump and checking in on mikey on his live streams and stuff like it's all it's all appreciated and it means a lot so thank you we're keeping the spirit of idiots alive for four years removed or four years removed nothing without you from Vidiot's beginning, oh, yes. so holy shit! Thank yeah. you, thank you a lot, uh, Mikey. There is a store, isn't there? Oh, you're absolutely ding dang right. It's store.yogscast.com, and if you head on over to this wonderful little site, you'll find a forgotten corner of Vidiot's merch, where you can find t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs. Oh, what a bounty! Mm. There's a variety. Uh, there's the classic VS1 shirt. We got the Poddy It's Legend shirt, a little jazzy 90s logo, whatever you want. And uh, no discount code still. But if you keep an eye on the Yogscast Twitter, you might be able to bag yourself free shipping, oh. international mm-hmm. even, or a discount. So keep your eyes peeled there. We did it. Actually, I forgot. We, we found um, 
a, a, an unworn, unopened Vidiot's T-shirt on e- eBay. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> by the time I tweeted it and we, we decided, yeah, we should buy that for ourselves. That's quite funny. Someone else had jumped in and bought it. So uh, yeah. congratulations to you. You paid a lot for of money. way more than you could buy one new in a shop, on the shop, <laughs> which is... yeah. Uh, but we admire the commitment to the bit. You're Thank mad, you. you. Who bought one, didn't open it, and then sold it on eBay? Who, who thought are they would listening? sell it on eBay? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, who, who thought anyone would be interested? If we'd not tweeted it, you would not have sold that. <laughs> You're welcome, though. And if you did sell it, let us know. We're, we're a little bit mad, but we also are very impressed. So <laughs> We just want to have a talk. Good for you. Um, yeah. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash... Vidiots official. official. Twitch.tv forward slash Vidiots official. That auto hosts the stuff that we're doing on Parrot Boy and Team Triple Jump, but you can go directly to the source for those. Uh, I am planning uh, vaguely another charity stream, maybe the first weekend of January. So keep your eyes peeled to the Let's social see. media for information on that and hope to see some of you there when everyone's poor because they haven't been paid since mid-December. Um, <laughs> what else we got? Streamlabs.com forward slash poddy. It's donations, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. Again, thank you so much for all your pod squad support this year. And we're going to run down this week's once again, Mikey, get, get us, get us going. Oh, I'll get us going. The generous one vowel from She-Ra, Donak 07, NFT of the McNuggies Cake, Festive Fox 42, Warhammer, Age of Chegmar, uh, The Generous, A Christmas Caroline, Bartek and Xmas Caroline. Shit, forgot to donate again. Fuck! Rosie is Gilborn Supreme. Crafty Cider Bristol LTE. Happy Grussy Time. The Generous, Sam the Jingle Barber, Merry Christmas to all, The Generous Jimmy the Rustler, Arse Face, Old Stooky Claws, The Generous Pro Trainer, and The Generous Delicious Festive Chegnog. Thank you very much, one thank and all. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, also, thank you to Merry Chegmas, everyone. The Very Generous Sir Digby Benson Phillips, Czechoslovakia But Festive, Momo Beans, Lord Vynachtsmantovic, uh, Mikey Needs Grussy, the very generous Stephen Skodes, Reindeer Drop Joy, Freddie Weber is Rudolph, a very meaningful Podiots, uh, Pete Benson Michaelips, Uncle Tim with the Long Finger, uh, Rye Bread Boy, who was very, very generous, thank you very much indeed, Caroling with Caroline, Harold Holt Aquatic Centre, Legs Game of the Year 2022, Caroline It's Finally Over, Prince Beefcakes, and Fish Come or Ye Faithful. Mm, joyful and triumphant. Uh, we've also got Alan Claw, who is very generous. Thank you. The very generous You Know It's All About Dakum. Thank you. Stupid Sexy Flounders. The very generous Pollen Packed Pipe. Mikey's Floppy Topper. The very generous Tommy the Wank Engine. Mr. The Black Nosed Reindeer. When are you joining Pickaxe? Jenny, will you marry me? What do you mean, no? The hell with you, then. You upset your mother, Ben. She is crying now. Mr. Macker, the very generous shit December for wankers, Caroline slept with Cheggers, Newcastle upon D's nuts, just keep swimming Ash, and Finn Tristam. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Once again, streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations, three pounds or more. We love you. We love you very much. Uh, Thank who you. would like to know what's coming out on podiots uh, over the next fortnight, three years ago? Oh boy, is sure it going to be like one video? It's <laughs> not much if we're not including live stream VODs. Uh, we've got the Vidiots Tell Your Friends montage where we put together a load of unused ones uh, in sort of one oh, long... That's a nice video. One long chain. We've got Worst Games Ever, Mr. Bean, which went out on the 23rd <laughs> oh, no. of December. And n- not two days later, on the 25th of December, Worst Games Ever, Santa Claus Saves the Earth, which was genuinely really terrible, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Just so, it is one of the worst games we've ever played. So awful. I say that a lot, but it actually was. <laughs> now, this, is, this last video is technically our final one because we've got two live stream VODs and then a video in March, uh, March the 15th, 2019, which says, where are the videos? Remember that one? Wow. So mm. the final video, and <laughs> yeah. remember, we won't be doing what happened on Vidiots this week four years ago until 
sort of February time in 2022 because we didn't we we weren't making videos uh, until like February. Yeah. The final video is What's in the Case Portal Goblin Face Reveal, which again brings <gasps> oh. us all the way back round to Dave Benson Phillips and our persistent pursuit of not leaving him out of it. Oh, and that was when he said it. Was it. He asked us. <laughs> that's yeah. the famous video where he said, just leave me out of it. Just leave me out of Cursed it. Cursed video. That's it. That's it. We've reached the end wow. of the year. And what a video to end on. I know. I know. And we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you, everyone. Mikey, where can people find you on the internet? At Paraboy on most platforms. I stream occasionally on Twitch. Might be a few more coming up over the festive period. And on Twitter as well, where I put random gubbins for you to come look and gawk at. Mm. Mm. Delightful. And Peter, where are we? We're at Team Triple Jump, youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump, uh, where we're continuing to make worst games ever. We even played a Christmas game this mm. year. Uh, hey, which was similar to Santa Claus Saves the Earth. But different in that it wasn't as horrendous, but was amusingly uh, well. It was it was it's an old game, and we kind of probably gave it too many allowances because we're like, well, it's old, but it was kind of bad, but kind of funny. Mm. So you know, um, and uh, Ben and I are also we've got our own social media. Of course, Ben is confused underscore dude on Twitter, and I am that Peter Austin. So you can find us there. Absolutely. And if you miss post some tat, we've got a big old tat unboxing on Triple Jump. Big, big Should tat be unboxing. available now. Yes, should be available now. Go watch it. It's very long. Yes. Very long. Mm. Um, and that, everybody, I believe, is that. Uh, why not leave us a review on iTunes or your platform of choice? It helps. Something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. Five stars, please. We love you. Five stars. Thank you. Thank Is you. there a final question before we disappear into the Christmas ether? Are you? Do you want anything nice for Christmas? What are you hoping for? What would you Christmas? like for Christmas? Oh, that's yes. nice. That's lovely. That'd be nice. Yeah. Have a very safe Christmas and New Year's, everybody. Get your booster if you're able to. Get vaccinated. Do be it. sensible. Follow yeah. guidance as much as it might stick in your craw because they're so fucking hypocritical and uh, protect your loved ones from the nasty virus do it do it please do it do it okay we love you everybody Merry Christmas bye 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 is there anyone that you've ever just felt so in love with tell me about it Mikey Gather round, this is one for the ages My love for this man has been growing in stages My heart aching, I'm shaking, now don't be mistaken The only green man for me, don't give a heck about trekking what? Kermit's a hermit, you know who I want Who? It's Jim Carrey but Harry. he's not really that scary It's okay to be wary of that derriere But you were beware, my feelings obscene All I'm seeing is green Oh, excuse me, I'm getting all flustered Freaky like that, I know who you're talking about. I feel the same. Other bitches be wary, I know he's worshipped by money. And when he brings him round town in his hat and his gown, he's bound to drown and grissy by the kilo by the pound. Ah, uh, he gets grissy. Tis the season, tis the time, Mr. Grinchy's in his prime. Green with envy, cause he's fine, and I wanna make him mine. I want him so fucking bad. When I come up to the function, spy it's fair and work up gumption. Bite my finger, skill seduction. Clear my throat and give instruction. You're an E, my Mr. Grinch. Punish me with every inch. Waist cinched, Grinch pinch. Gonna be me like in sync. Let me just catch my breath, oh my god. Though he's bumpy, I'm aware. When my hand is in his hair, he won't forget our love affair. One more, say a prayer. Green lip, thick ass, give him with a flash. Quick flash, titty spat, and finish real fast. Too fast. Just kidding, that's literally all the fantasy. I've never had sex with the Grinch. I do think about it though. Ah, oh, don't we all? Dreaming about slurping that gherkin until he starts squirting. Somebody get me a muzzle, cause I'm about to guzzle. Me thick, make me come me quick. My holy mission is a nocturnal emission. I'm begging you, please. Now I'm telling you, his heart ain't the only thing that really three sizes that night.